What's up everybody? Welcome to my next video on how to make an H-Bridge KiCad PCB. So in our previous video, we went over how to design this schematic in KiCad, which is a free and open source PCB design software. And in another video of mine, I also went into the theory of how the H-Bridge works. So if you haven't seen those two videos yet, you should check them out uh, because it will make this video make a lot more sense. So after you have this schematic, you need to tell the software uh, to convert this to a PCB layout format. So the way you do that is you go to file and you go to export and then you click netlist. Click export netlist. Now just go to whatever directory you want um, your project files to be in and click save. It'll then uh, prompt you for whatever like unfinished annotations you need to do. So just click annotate and there you go. So now we have our netlist. So what we can do now is we can go to um, the project sort of home screen of this software and click PCB editor. Then we're gonna go to file, import, netlist and click um, the little folder icon and then the name of the netlist file and update PCB. So before we make our PCB, we need to make sure that everything here is labeled correctly and has the right footprint. So a footprint is quite literally the uh, the area that each of these components will take and you need to specify what kind of package each element uh, what, like the package type for each element so for example here if we click R1 you can see that we haven't specified what the footprint is yet so if we click um, this little book stack here and then we go down to uh, resistors or let's just filter resistor SMD uh, SMD standing for surface mount device and one thing you want to keep in mind here is you want to uh, you want to choose a package type that is the right size not too small and not too large especially if you're going to be hand soldering this device you do not want to try to hand solder a zero point uh, a zero two zero one resistor it'll look like a speck of dust. So you want to pick something around uh, 0805. That's a good uh, size resistor to solder yourself. So we're just gonna click uh, this one, click enter and click okay. And we just wanna do that for all of the resistors. Pro tip, make one resistor that has all the properties you want and then copy and paste it. We can see here that the opto isolator has the, the package already specified, so that's good. And our MOSFETs also have the packages that we selected earlier when we were choosing our components. So those are all good. And we can just do a quick check that uh, the circuit is is all good to go. Uh, it's complaining about um, this unconnected pin here, but that's fine because we don't need that connected to anything. So we're now ready to export to Netlist. So we go File, Export, Netlist, and we're going to save it to demo.net. We're gonna open up our demo, and we're just gonna refresh uh, the design, so Netlist, and it's complaining it has four errors. Uh, cannot add J1, J2, J3, J4, no footprint assigned. Okay, so we need to fix this up one more time. So we come here, and we want to open up these properties and select the footprint. So we just need a connector. So we'll just select connector and we're going to want a, a 2.54 millimeter connector. 
This size is the standard jumper wire size. So if you have Arduino jumper wires lying around, they're 2.54 millimeters. Um, so now let's just select a, uh, a pin header, one times O2. And we want these to be uh, males, uh, a male interface. And the way you know it's male is because pin header refers to male and pin socket refers to female. So we're just gonna select uh, one by two vertical. Cool. So click OK. And do the same for these. And lastly, we're gonna need a one by one vertical. Cool. So now we're gonna do the process one more time. Nut list. File import nut list. This time there are no zeros. So update our PCB. Close. All right. So now that we have all the components that we need, um, the first thing we can do, kind of as a rough uh, first step, is to just draw a random board outline so that we can visualize better where we're going to put all the components. So board perimeter definition. So click rectangle, and we're just going to draw. Uh, the outline of our board. Now we're gonna make this smaller uh, eventually, but for now, let's just do this. So the objective now is to place our components such that we minimize the amount of crossing between the traces, because these, these small lines here are, are gonna become actual metal connections. So you can't have these connections crossing and if you really, really do need them to cross, you have to drill a hole in the board and then go from top to bottom and bottom to up again. So you wanna minimize that as much as you can. So I'm going to place these J connectors uh, kind of near like the edge of the board so that uh, we can kind of have the interface on the outside. That just kind of makes sense to me. And one thing we can also do is, is declutter this by coming here and then uh, getting rid of the show. And that'll, that'll make our lives a little easier. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of all the uh, kind of extraneous information, uh, and now we're just gonna focus on uh, placing the components.
All right, everybody. So after some trial and error, I finally settled on a design I think I like. Um, what I like about this is the inputs are up here at the top, and then the outputs are at the bottom. And the power is right in the middle of the circuit, kind of in the middle of all the components that need it, uh, which will minimize the amount of traces going all over the board. Uh, so yeah, the only thing left to do at this point um, is actually draw all the connections. And if we uh, placed our parts around the board uh, intelligently, the traces should be as short as possible. Um, and this, this has numerous benefits. One, it's less prone to air. Two, um, signals are less prone to electromagnetic interference because the longer the cable or uh, trace in this context, uh, the more noise there will be and the more susceptible um, our signals will be to disruptions from nearby electronics. Uh, if you consider what an antenna is, uh, it's often just a really long trace that zigzags a bunch of times and that'll emit uh, radiation and frequencies um, uh, and introduces the possibility for uh, disruptions in the internal circuit. So that's why we want to keep the, short, the, the traces as short as possible. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, try to connect as many of the ground points as possible. So we're going to click uh, bottom. And this is just a personal preference, but I like to put ground signals on the bottom. Uh, it just kind of makes sense to me. So click um, bottom and then route tracks. And we're gonna start with the motor ground. So I'm gonna click here, and as you can see, it kind of highlights uh, where signals should go. And because it's on the bottom, uh, one thing we're gonna need to do is place what's called a via. So a via is just a hole in the board. So we're gonna go to place and add via and click it right there. And now you can see we can easily connect um, on the top layer to this uh, to this pad. The reason we have to do that is because the component is a surface mount component, so it only exists on one side of the board. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna continue uh, with some other um, motor grounds. We're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, place via, add a via, and Finish the connection. Cool. Now we're gonna do this one. So we're gonna click motor again, and we're gonna kind of uh, branch off here as much as we can. And we're gonna be going to this uh, pad, and that should be, oh, we have one more. So here, and we're just gonna connect it to this via. And that should take care of our motor grounds. Now we have the signal ground, which we can connect to the opto isolators. And the opto isolators are through hole, which means we don't have to add any vias. Um, Get rid of that. So we're going to connect it to that intersection. Nice. So we pretty much have all the grounds. So now we're going to focus on the top layer. So here we can see some low hanging fruit. We can connect the output uh, to the J connector. And um, some helpful uh, advice here is try to avoid 90 degree angles as much as possible. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but I, what I've been told is uh, it helps manufacturing wise and also signal interference wise if you avoid really sharp angles in the trace. Um, so yeah, it's just a good habit, good practice. So we're gonna connect these together uh, and these together. So these are gonna be the terrains of our MOSFETs. 
So we'll do the same thing here. And we'll do the same thing here. And you can, you can see how the placement really affects uh, routing, just how much easier it is if everything is geometrically consistent. So nice short connections. Oops, let's escape there. And we need one more between, looks like pad two of the resistor and Q1. All right, so now we need to do a bit of tricky uh, trace manipulation here um, because we need to connect the motor ground to uh, over here, but we can't do that without crossing other traces. So I'm just gonna add uh, a via. And we're gonna need another via eventually. So I'm gonna delete this trace for now. And I'm going to route this under, escape. And then we're gonna place a via right here. And we're going to finish this connection. And we'll, we'll do something similar over here. Although in this case, uh, we don't need a via. We can just go from here to here. Cool. Now, the reason I deleted this is because I uh, want to make uh, the traces a little further apart. So our grid is actually 0 0.63. I'm gonna go ahead and make that a little larger. And I want that to be the minimum distance between the tracks. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, you wanna minimize electromagnetic interference in the PCB. So there you go, a little more spread out. Now we need to finish up uh, the H-bridge connections. And now we need to connect, um, I believe, is this the gate? Nice. Look at that, we're almost done. So, going to connect in one and gonna connect in two to our four. And that is not the most ideal geometry. So we're gonna try this one again. I'm gonna connect something like, yeah, something like that. So here, I'm gonna connect there and Something like that should be fine. All right, there you have it. We have all our connections. So now I'm just gonna kind of move the silk screen around a little. That looks fine. That looks fine. That looks fine. Put maybe the U's on the sides. It's a little awkward, but now, now I can go back to the smaller grids so that I have a little more flexibility. Yeah, that's, that's better. R2, sure. J2, J2. Put maybe right there. J4. Yeah, sure. And the Q's on the side, maybe we'll make them Consistent. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm happy with this. Now what I'm gonna do is label um, the PCB to make it a little more user-friendly. So we can go to a user comment. Or no, silk screen, yeah, that's the one. And we're gonna add some text. So we'll call this um, motor outputs or uh, I guess that's a little too long we'll do outputs cool Click okay nice and I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go up here and uh, change this to inputs uh, it seems like control enter does what we want and 
I want this to be a little more obvious. So it's gonna be tight fitting something in here, but we'll see if we can do it. So I'm gonna call this uh, M power. We'll see if we can make it fit. Motor power. And maybe something like that. Okay. Looks a little funny. Maybe I can rotate it. Yeah, okay, that's a little more consistent. And then I'm gonna do some nice space right here. Uh, we'll call this S signal uh, GND. And we'll just flip, flip it like that. Okay. Cool. Now, if you want to get fancy, one thing you can do here is maybe add your, um, oh, not that, maybe add your initials. We'll call this JPM. Um, or I'll call this Canis Tecus. Maybe I'll add it right here. And I'll modify it a bit. Maybe like that. Yeah, too much space. So now we have a pretty good looking PCB. So let's take a take a quick look in the 3D viewer. Nice. looks pretty good. Now, one thing we can do is uh, maybe add a little screw hole on each of the corners in case someone wants to secure this thing. Um, so I think we can do So I'm just gonna add a hole here, hole. Okay, cool, just called mounting hole. And I want an M3, they allow it, let's see, M, M3. Okay, we'll use this. Oh, that's a little big, maybe something smaller. Go place, add footprint, hole. Um, maybe M2.5. I feel like that's reasonable. We'll have to place it like here. Make, make this a bit bigger. Okay. And let's get rid of that. I don't know what this is. Let's get rid of it. Don't show. All right, let's see how this thing looks. View 3D viewer. Okay, we have a little more, a little bigger now, but um, if, if you want screw holes, then uh, it's probably okay to sacrifice a little bit of, a little bit of size. Now we can have a little more fun if we want to add some silk screen text. So let's go, Anis Tekis. Make this a little, a little thicker. 0.3. Too large for the text size. Okay. 0.5. Now, can 
conduit. Nice. Okay. And another uh, common practice is to add the revision of the board. So this is the first revision. So put that here. So one thing we can do is, is perform a design rule check. Make sure we didn't do anything silly. Look at that, we have no errors. There's some warning here. And these warnings, okay, yeah. They're just complaining that all the pads are named the same for the holes. So we'll just give them some unique names. Two, this is gonna be three. I'm just gonna spread that out. And this one is gonna be four. Nice, so we'll do it one more time. Run DRC. Footprint, extra footprint. What does that mean? What is extra footprint? Oh, okay. So what this is saying is uh, these footprints don't exist on our diagram, uh, which is expected because there's no point in adding a bunch of holes here. So, you know, that's fine. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. And stay tuned for more on how to get this board fabricated and sent directly to your door. Please remember to drop a like and subscribe. And see you guys in the next video.